On October 4, 2017, eight heavily armed pickup trucks left the village of Tongo Tongo in Niger, West Africa. They were several U.S. Special Forces and African soldiers in search of Dundu Shefu, a high-ranking IS leader in the region. Only a short time later, the Special Forces were ambushed and became the hunted themselves. The tragic events, in which the Green Berets fought for their lives on their own, became known as the deadly Tongo Tongo ambush. As soon as the convoy left the village, the rear vehicles came under enemy fire from a well-prepared ambush. The fire was sporadic at first, but became stronger as they reached a small forest. To counter the enemy, the soldiers halted and dismounted under covering fire. The team leader of the Green Berets then formed a squad with four Nigerian soldiers and engaged the enemy forces, neutralizing four insurgents. Once the threat was eliminated, however, they noticed something far more concerning. The gunmen they had just engaged were only the tip of the enemy forces. Behind them, nearly 100 more enemies were advancing on motorcycles and pickup trucks, equipped with machine guns, mortars, and other heavy weapons. The team leader, recognizing the danger, ran back to the convoy and ordered his soldiers to withdraw as quickly as possible. However, since most of the forces were spread out, the evasion was delayed and uncoordinated. Therefore, three Green Berets, who had previously covered the withdrawal of their comrades, suddenly found themselves alone on the battlefield. They were Brian Black, Jeremiah Johnson, and Dustin Wright. The three special forces now faced nearly 100 enemies and had no heavy weapons or air support available. Following the principle of fire and move, they tried to disengage from the enemy, but the IS fighters were too fast and too many. Despite the Green Berets' accurate defensive fire, they were getting closer and closer. Every yard gained allowed the enemy to engage the special forces even more effectively. Brian Black was the first soldier to be hit as he ran alongside the rolling vehicle to provide covering fire for his comrades. He died instantly. Johnson and Wright returned fire before pulling Black into cover behind the vehicle. But as the enemies got closer, both realized they would be overrun at any moment. Within seconds, they made the difficult decision to leave their fallen comrade behind and ran for their lives. In the open step, they initially managed to escape the hail of enemy bullets, but soon Johnson was hit and fell to the dusty ground. Wright turned and saw Johnson badly wounded lying on the ground, with bullets hitting all around him. He had a chance to escape and perhaps save his life, but decided not to leave his brother to the insurgents. He then ran back and defended Johnson until he too was hit and went down, badly wounded. According to the Geneva Conventions, wounded and obviously incapacitated are under protection and must be cared for. In the video footage, Johnson was almost motionless on the ground and could no longer lift a weapon. Since the IS fighters did not agree to the Geneva Convention, nor care about human aspects in war, they came within a few yards and executed both severely wounded men with numerous shots at close range. Staff Sergeant LaDavid Johnson was the fourth American soldier who was killed during the Tongo Tongo ambush. The American and African soldiers who had managed to disengage from the enemy in time took up positions about 700 yards south of the attack site. Among them was LaDavid Johnson, the team's mechanic. When the group realized they had left three comrades behind, they tried to contact the squad by radio, however, to no avail. Finally, four Green Berets volunteered to run back to the dangerous battlefield to search for the soldiers. After the rescue squad set off, the forces that had just escaped were shot at again. Johnson returned fire with one of the mounted machine guns on the vehicles. When ammunition ran out, he continued to engage the enemy with his sniper rifle. However, as the group was threatened to be surrounded by the enemy again, the team leader had to order an evasion maneuver for the second time. The vehicles began moving and sped away at top speed to escape the hail of enemy bullets. In the process, they left Johnson and two of the African soldiers behind, assuming they would join the convoy in a moment. However, enemy fire became so intense that Johnson was unable to enter his truck, which had its driver's side facing the enemy. 
As the insurgents came closer, the three soldiers had no choice but to escape on foot across the savanna. They ran as fast as they could. The enemies reached the empty pickup truck, recognized the fleeing soldiers, and immediately pursued with their vehicles. The African soldiers got about 400 yards before they were caught up and killed. LaDavid Johnson, who had tremendous stamina due to his good training, managed to run almost a mile from the enemy before taking up his final stand at a small bush. From here, he fiercely fought off numerous enemies, successfully keeping them at bay at first. However, the mechanic had only his assault rifle and no heavy weapons. There was no radio or phone connection to his comrades. Nevertheless, the family man did not give up and ceaselessly returned fire. It was only when the Islamists approached within 100 yards in an armed vehicle and fired a hail of bullets at Johnson that they were able to take him out. He died alone with a gun in his hand and after receiving a total of 18 gunshot wounds. It took two days to locate and recover his body. The lively soldier left behind his pregnant wife, a daughter, and a son. Michael Perrozini and Brent Bartles were the leaders during the Tongo Tongo ambush. In addition to their American comrades, they also coordinated the African soldiers. Even before the ambush, they had expressed their concerns about the operation because they had no heavy weapons or air support. Moreover, they had been in the field for a long time and desperately needed to rest as well as replenish their supplies. Nevertheless, higher leadership urged them to continue the search for the IS leader. After the Green Berets and their allies came under fire and had to escape twice to avoid being trapped by the enemy, they were still pursued by a large number of heavily armed Islamists. Most of the African forces had fled, so they were now seven to a vehicle, closely followed by several enemy trucks. During the chase, five of the mounted soldiers suffered gunshot wounds. One African soldier was killed, and the driver got an elbow wound, but ignored his pain and continued driving. The Special Forces team leader was hit so hard that he fell off the truck bed, and the team had to turn back to retrieve him. After continuing to evade, they encountered the four Green Berets, who had earlier volunteered to separate from the group to search for the comrades left behind. Still, the enemy forces not only outnumbered them, but also had motorcycles, armed vehicles, and mortars, with which they now attacked the American team leaders and their remaining comrades. The special forces were surrounded from almost all sides and sent out a final radio message saying they were soon to be overrun. They then destroyed the radios and other sensitive information and said goodbye to their loved ones via text message. As a last hope for rescue, Perazzini tried to request help via the military version of iMessenger, but the messages were not delivered. In the desperate texts, he wrote, among other things, We are We need help now or we aren't going to make it. Tongo Tongo is a bad village. Other special forces stationed in Africa heard about their comrades' hopeless situation and desperately asked their leaders to be allowed to help. One group of Green Berets even boarded a helicopter without waiting for any orders to fly to the attack site, but had to turn back. Only one French commando showed up after about an hour, along with air support, were the survivors rescued. During the Tongo Tongo ambush, four Green Berets were killed, as well as four African soldiers and a translator who had been working for the military. For their exceptional performance and camaraderie, even in the face of certain death, all the fallen were awarded Medals of Valor. Dustin Wright and LaDavid Johnson were posthumously awarded the Silver Star, while Brian Black and Jeremiah Johnson received the Bronze Star. The African soldiers also received awards. Two Nigerians received Bronze Stars for their actions during the ambush. The first soldier had assisted in the successful flanking maneuver on the insurgents, while the second Nigerian voluntarily exposed himself to friendly fire to alert his comrades to their mistake. The funeral of the fallen soldiers was attended by a total of several thousand people. A brotherhood that no one else could ever understand. <laughs>